We close. True, hard, full, car. Hard car. Hard car to the mega. Here comes the night. We close. True, hard, full, car. It's hard car. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. We close. True, hard, full, hard car. Hard car to the mega. Internally coherent. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Yakokata, the place to be. Yakokata is a hardcore place. Yakokata is an abbreviation from the Gradian term. Zone of Ecological Catastrophe. An agricultural mega project in the extreme southeast of the Gradian Isola. It involved cutting-edge approaches to irrigation and a completely new type of fertilizer. An intricate system of irrigation networks pockmarking the earth. Intermittent seas of phosphorus mud, ripped tarpaulin fluttering in the wind. A pair of molten rubber boots also comes to mind. All in all, a truly hardcore place. The cloud, true, hardcore, hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Yako Qatar, the place to be. It's the message, so listen and you will see. No illusion, the spirit is what you feel. The cloud, true, hard, hardcore, hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All car, all right, yeah. Gotta get the people going. Yeah, request. I want everybody as close to the stage as possible. The club, true, hardcore, hardcore, internally coherent, all car, all right. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime, invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the church. Hardcore! Ah! The question is, what is the question? But there was a question? bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Above the mural, a collapsed roof Broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical, you only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. 
Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Indeed, somehow you knew it was here. An urban ruin gutted by looters that once used to consume money and dispense warmth and light. In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical ruin over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. Trying to talk to the wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now you're just standing there with your hands falling to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? A prayer of sorts? To Rivershaw? Or do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt. So we have an understanding of the geography, at least. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. An adventure on the windswept urban coast. Suddenly, there's a sigh, carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. She's down there. Okay, why? So, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Finally, my time to shine. Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. An old pipe peeks out from beneath the rotten boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions, perhaps a basement access. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. A thin layer of snow gleams inside the pipe. As your eyes adjust, you see some trash. Crumpled up newspapers, cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And, and nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of the pipe. A syringe. Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely and not without risk to our health either. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around. And it's right here, a maintenance door. 
It's jammed shut. The subtle approach isn't going to work on this one. You and the lieutenant lean all your weight into pushing the doors apart, but you're not quite synchronizing your efforts. They slam shut again before you can enter. Let's take a breather and try this again later. It's very tough. Behind the pipe, the maintenance door. The metal doors are heavy and the flaking rust hurts your palms. But together with the lieutenant, you manage to slide them open just enough to squeeze in. Good work. Shall we? This hat is so soft, so warm. It wraps around your head, and your mind tingles with all manner of socio-economic theory. Kras Mazov would have worn this, Yushenka. Mazov knew where to cook those thoughts. That's why it bears a Mazovian logo. Glory to the revolution, comrade. Whether you like it or not, wearing this hat has made you more communist. Could this have been the killer's hideout? And this narrow window, the point of origin of the shot that killed the mercenary? This does look like an embrasure, a slit made for shooting out of. 
Outside the window, desolation, snow falls softly onto the coastal sand, where it melts almost instantly. On rooftops, it lingers. It's a great place to hide, certainly. But there hasn't been anyone here in ages. Indeed, no one could get a clear view. Well, at least we've been thorough. I like thorough. A mustachioed and mutton-chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. A plaque reads, K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Yes, I can see that. Looks like some communists were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. Half a century? This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment back then, but that's all been looted. We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. I won't stand in your way, but only after we're through with this case. Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. No, what do you mean? I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. No, but you are the sensitive one. Looks like our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do? We'll set in motion events we have no control over. It will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. I leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. It's dangerous, but... He just can't be sure. Maybe it will yield something useful. Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, Gunrunner, and Bat. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, follow me on Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to both of my channels. Thanks for watching. Bye.